there. So I'll select this to the end. SpongeBob Square. Is that SpongeBob Square Pumpkin? Yes, he lives in a pineapple under the sea. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> and he's friends with Patrick Starr and yeah. Sandy Cheeks. I went through a phase watching, of watching SpongeBob like when I was out, when I was about 30. <laughs> I watched lots of SpongeBob. It was great. <laughs> yeah, my girls and me still retell the <laughs> jokes sometimes. <laughs> so, namaste. It's mm -hmm. nice to be with you again. So today, Ribu, in the same verse, Ribu says, I'm, I'm finished. That's, I've said all I have to say. And in that same mm. verse, in the same verse, the Daga, uh, he's just overwhelmed. Okay. So we get, to, we get to experience that today. I forget exactly what verse we had stopped on. It's somewhere in the 30s. Yeah, I have a... Liam Crowley Babel was minding our page. Oh. Yeah, he's doing it. Perfect. Well, I don't know. Well, if we just start on 31, that was a good idea. We might cover a few that we did already. Yeah. What's your pleasure? I don't mind. Beautiful. If we don't know where we are, 31 things, I could go up to. Would you like to read or should I? Yeah, I can. I'll start. If this treatise is regularly read, at least once daily, with dedicated discipline, even by one who is not equipped to study and ponder over and assimilate the meaning of this treatise, all the sins committed in endless existences will be completely eliminated in that birth. And attaining profound undivided supreme knowledge, he will abide as the nature of the taint of supreme. That's pretty magical. It's a relief. <laughs> yeah. You don't even have to ponder or, or assimilate the meaning of it, right? You just read it. It's like a little, it's like a key or something. You know, if you're playing a computer game and there's like a kind of a cheat code. This is like the cheat past the level. <laughs> okay. One who hears this even once in his lifetime will attain liberation. There is none in this world to equal. One who reads this regularly, daily. Hence, rare sage, casting aside the endless things with no authority whatever. All who have the urge for liberation should, without a day's discontinuance, take to the study of this spotless treatise. That's you, you're a rare sage. I'm honored <laughs> being in your company. Observe that this treatise is the essence of the ultimate conclusion of all scriptures. The differenceless treatise is the settled conclusion of all Vedas and Vedanta. This honored treatise is the final conclusion of all the sages imbued with perfectly full knowledge. This revered treatise is the fitting finale graciously gifted to us by our Lord. I remember this from last night. Stage with me as well, like just that sense, of, it's like so full of joy. It's like everything that we see is the finale. And look, my book's even starting to fall apart, and we'll get to the end, and the whole thing will just crumble. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most recondite of the recondite. This is the essence of the essences of all. This is the rarest of the rare in the world. This is the most marvelous message. This is the dispeller of all doubt. This is the bestower of the changeless certitude. This is the destroyer of all debilitating duality. This is what confers the natural state, Sahaja, without a second. Sage of great tapas, what avails explanation in so many words? This is the treatise to turn to for aid. 
on the earth, in the heavens, anywhere. The extremely rare. True it is. This is the essence of various texts, such as the Vedas, the scriptures, the epics, and others. There is not a tome in the world to equal this treatise. Once, in days of yore, my father, with a doubt arising in his heart, that none will get liberated by this text, secreted this by throwing it into the ocean of milk. Then, coming to know of this, I immediately retrieved this when it washed ashore on the ocean of milk, and my father was furiously enraged with me. Departing from that world that day, I reached this wonderful holy spot of Kedara, and today, moved by your devotion, I have now expounded this treatise for the benefit of all. Besides, there is no one in this wide world competent to understand the meaning of this treatise and to communicate it to a competent disciple. Is not this pure supreme knowledge indeed rare? God. The undivided knowledge is rare to come by. So also is this treatise a rarity. One who understands this rare treatise is indeed a rarity. One who graciously teaches this rare treatise is indeed also a rarity. One who listens attentively to this rare treatise is also a rarity indeed. The blemishless disciple competent to listen to this work is rare, great sage. The sad guru, true guru, to teach this beneficial text is also a great rarity. Those who have obtained this book devoid of differences are also rare. Because of these factors, this treatise has not achieved its proper renown. This treatise, which has the power to completely remove all wavering, and instill undividedness will come within the reach of only that ultimate life with no more birth fit to attain one's natural state after the fruition of all the dharma practice in successive births and removal of all sins to those who reach this treaty there is no more birth this i say in the name of maheshwara the great lord I think it's interesting how this Ribu is this Ribu talking. I think it's interesting how Ribu was saying his father, which is basically Shiva, had like a moment of doubt and like threw the book away. Like I think that's really like encouraging as a <laughs> for us, you know, because like you can have like a moment of doubt. Like a moment. It doesn't mean anything, you know, because sometimes we can have a moment of doubt or a moment where it seems like we're not living by by these words and by this treaty, <laughs> so to say. So like if his father, like Shiva, the Lord of the whole universe, <laughs> can have a doubt and like throw the thing away and think, oh, no one's going to understand. <laughs> then how, we can how have... How graceful this. is that? Yeah, it's gracious. <laughs> Anything is possible. <laughs> Because who is there to even to understand? So it is a doubt, really, you know, <laughs> in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. In days past, the Lord, risen as a divine auspicious form, graciously taught me this text of such repute for the benefit of all. In like manner, I have also, in a spirit of compassion and in depth, taught this to you, Nizaga. Whoever reaches this efficacious text will become of the nature of the Supreme Brahman of Consciousness. I have said all that I have to say. Now I shall betake myself somewhere else. Hearing these profound words of Rigu, overcome with joy and with tears of happiness welling up in his eyes, his body in trepidation with overwhelming devotion, Nadaga prostrated himself with humility, and his voice choking in ecstasy uttered this. 
even before he speaks, I'm feeling so like joyful and so happy for him. <laughs> so I feel like like some like all the angels are singing and like every every being is like proclaiming the glory of God or something. It's like so joyful. Oh yeah. <laughs> Shafts of bright light shining down. Yes. Okay. Would you like to read this glorious part? Honored Guru, with a sublime knowledge beyond comprehension by your compassion small-minded i have become have overcome my littleness and have grown to be the great undivided complete perfect fullness without separate identity by obtaining this hard to get audience of yourself i have obtained all there is to be obtained in this birth by the rare relationship with your grace, I have become one who has successfully fulfilled all that is to be done. My guide, of the words that you in your grace have bestowed, I have taken up for reflection one of the statements of certitude that you have uttered. Thoroughly effacing all attachment and holding fast to supreme bliss, I have become of the nature of the Supreme Brahman. What shall I say of your compassion that has removed all my worldly sorrow and conferred undivided bliss? There is not an iota of doubt in what has been said. How shall I describe this greatness of yours, revered master? There's no recompense, sorry, there's no recompense for this help of yours rendered in compassion. Supreme Guru, my humble self would offer endless variety of obeisance to your pair of feet. But even obeisance of a courtesy than anything else for all is Brahman and the ultimate truth, and no difference of any kind exists. Uh, there's echoes of Amba here. <laughs> no, I'm only echoing. Why, why should I? Why should I bow? Yeah, why should I bow if we're the same? It's acknowledging that we're different, and you know. Mm. But not really. Why should I bow? It's like more like we should all bow to each other. <laughs> ah, there you go. Like, okay. I felt like that. Like, I don't know if you remember this, but it's like, if I bow to you and you bow to me, then we kind of cancel each other out. In a way. Okay. <laughs> but cancel each other out in a good way, like, because we're both nothing. <laughs> we're, both, we're both the same. Like, I don't know, it doesn't feel right to say, like, you know, we shouldn't, like, bow to someone. Because I know it feels more like, I feel more like I should bow to everyone. Hmm. I feel much more joyful and that's mm -hmm. like the great finale that we were talking about the great uh, finale where we recognize that like everything is God or everything is the self or everything is brown you know so how could you not be full of joy <laughs> you don't really have to go around bound to yourself the whole time <laughs> <laughs> My good guide, in the revelation of the divine awareness I have personally experienced by your compassion, there is neither I who am speaking to you, nor this treatise on which has been heaped such praise. No individuals affected by bondage, no Lord, and none of the differentiated earth or other worlds. Revered Guru, all is the Supreme Brahman of the undivided nature and nothing apart. Great among gurus, in the partless, undivided supreme revelation which I have obtained by your compassion, all is of the nature of the supreme Brahman, and there is nothing apart as all. 
There is no such talk of the manifold, of Brahma, and of all, as being separate entities. Nothing ever exists anywhere. All that is is Brahman, of the nature of awareness. The rapidly rising projection of I, the persistent projections of this before one, the pluralistic mode of the body and such, the witness mode of I am the witness, and the undivided mode of I the one supreme. Without any of such modes or projections, the sorrowless, spotless nature of the supreme, the self-illumined, alone shines. Are you being bothered by someone? Is someone playing with you on that, on that side? Yeah, well, I'm not really bothered, but I'm just talking with things things. Okay. Mm. Well, this last verse is worth reading again. It's so beautiful. It's okay. all incredible. Okay. The rapidly rising projection of I, the persistent projections of this before one, the pluralistic mode of the body and such, the witness mode of I am the witness, and the undivided mode of I the one supreme. Without any of such modes or projections, the sorrowless, spotless nature of the supreme, the self-illumined, alone shines. Mm -hmm. Can I read the last few verses? By your grace, with all manner of differences in my mind, removed in a trice, I have reached the inexplicable, undivided, natural state of my own nature. There is no doubt in what has been said, Supreme Guru. Praising thus with love, he, Nadara, was happily and readily ensconced by himself in his natural state, Sahaj. It is only for those who are blessed with the compassion of the great Shiva and the compassion of the Guru, who is the embodiment of that Shiva, that the perception of the appearance of world, individuals and the Supreme will disappear without a trace and the indivisible, undivided Supreme state result. What is spoken is the truth. Thus, Sutta thoroughly explained the great truth expounded to Jaigi Shavya by Skanda. It is the infinite form of our perfectly full Lord in a state of joyous dance that proclaims, there is nothing apart from the absolute reality, which is all complete. All is the all complete supreme reality that you are. This is the treatise of treatises the essence of all. I'm just so happy for both of these characters, you know, Ribu for finally saying all he has to say and <laughs> Nadan for expressing that he's uh, taking something with him. Mm. I'm happy for both of these characters. 
ってやっぱりやめて。<笑> And they are also receiving the word of rhythm. It's like that, they're not just words. I remember talking to Muji once and I, I don't know what I was saying, but he said something to me like, some along the lines, who do you think you're talking to? Or something, or, something. <laughs> or I don't know what it was, but the essence of it was like that. Like, And it wasn't just that, that was one part of it. And then another part of it was because I was kind of saying, I was like expressing my kind of like, Doubt in a way, like I was kind of saying, like words can't really do anything. I was saying, you know, I was kind of saying, you can hear words over and over again, but like it's not really words that makes anything happen. And then the essence of what he was saying was that really they're not just words, <laughs> you know, because those words are arising from source, the self, the supreme. <laughs> and they are, in fact, that as a So they're not just words, you know, it's our mind that says they're just words, but these kind of words are not just words. So it was kind of reminded me that, and it was real like, oh yeah, that kind of put me in my place. <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> and in a way, I feel like there was a kind of an element of truth in what I was saying as well. Like in our, in our being, you know, like it's like, it can feel sometimes like words are, words aren't really doing anything. It's grace that does everything. Mm. But yeah, like his words are grace and his words are full of grace. So that's why they're not just words. Like maybe sometimes they're just words if they're empty or dry or, or maybe it's the way we hear them that makes them just words and the way we take it. Because if we take them like and embrace them and take them in, then they're more than just words. Because mm. if you say they're just words, that's like just your mind differentiating, like everything is Brahma according to this. Everything is brown. There's one verse I'd like to read. I know we read it twice, but I just would like to read it one more time to see if something comes. Okay. I suspect something will, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's just back to 48. The rising, sorry, the rapidly rising projection of I, the persistent projections of this before one, the pluralistic mode of the body and such, the witness mode of I am the witness and the undivided mode of I the one supreme. Without any such modes or projections, the sorrowless, spotless nature of the supreme, the self-illumined, alone shines. Definitely a very beautiful verse. It's, <laughs> Nadaga. it's Nadaga saying it. Yeah. You sound surprised. <laughs> oh, I'm just so happy for him. <laughs> it's like Alden and the Vagus, anyway, are just pretending to be the disciple. <laughs> you know, so like he's just like not pretending anymore. Mm. If he ever was, I don't know. We don't even know if he was. He was just listening. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe in the beginning he, he, I don't know, felt like he was pretending to be a disciple. Or <laughs> <laughs> But that's the whole point, isn't it? That like there is no above and below, or no, there's no one who knows more than someone else. There's no teacher and disciple. So we're all equal, and we're all equal, not just in our like who we are, but we're all equal in our knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we're all equal in our wisdom. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
The only thing that makes us seem like we're not is if we're just kind of tuned into a story. Mm. You know, like buying into the story or playing it, playing a role. Um, maybe taking it a bit too seriously. <laughs> so that can make it seem like as if someone else has more knowledge than we do. Mm. But like that's not really true. It's just that's another story. <laughs> somehow the the ability to discern has grown over over these chapters mm -hmm. um i'd like to think it's grown over here but i want to give nadaga credit for being able to recognize the rising projections of i that's like how you were talking about yourself <laughs> were you not talking about yourself i i haven't found that guy <laughs> no. i'd like to hear you talking about yourself how about it? How about yourself? Have you found that your own discrimination is the forward date? If if um <clears throat> if um some real quiet comes, you know, some real stillness, mm. um, and just this um, I I want to say grace, mm. um, but there is there is a bit of effort, you know, to maybe hold the back up straight, to sit really quietly. Mm. And what if there's not silence? Hmm? What if you're not aware of silence? But then it's then out the world is full of differences and differentiation and bad and good. <laughs> well, in, in, in other terms, it would be, you know, just believe in, believe in this mind stream somehow. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah, that still happens. <laughs> But we we absolved we absolved ourselves of that a few a few yeah. verses ago I think when we just got started. Anyway, you're a rare sage, so you've not totally the, the rare rarest of the rare coming across this rare teaching, and like we spend a lot of time reading mm. reading this um, rare treatise. <laughs> so you will be free of all of that in this this existence. This uh, birth, the fellow says, this birth. And as long as if we need to make effort, so what difference does it make? It's a beautiful effort to make. Mm. And it's kind of like the kind of effort that's not like a hard effort. At least I've never felt it like a hard effort. It's more of a, like, it might, we might use the word effort, but really it's a joy. <laughs> it's a joyful effort if we have to make an effort. And eventually it doesn't matter if there's silence or not. Or more like just the silence is like permeating everything. More and more. Mm. Feels like that. Maybe that's the thing that can continue to seemingly grow. That the silence permeates all, all parts of our lives more and more. Mm. It really doesn't matter. You just can't believe a story. Like I think we were saying before, like even if you're in the middle of a story, you can't believe it. Like I, I was telling you before, like sometimes I find myself in the middle of a kind of a, a story, you could say, not really a story, but like a, like some kind of energy happening in my body, you know, like that wants to express itself. <laughs> and like maybe there could be like a feeling of like sadness or something. Just the thing that comes sometimes, like a feeling of sadness. And so you can't even believe it really. But like I totally, I like to encourage it as well. <laughs> in a way like not so much in a believing way but like encourage it to just like let it play out but like it can be quite entertaining like sometimes even when I'm uh, I could be having not really an argument with Tyson but like we could be together and like something can seem real serious for a second and I just start laughing or I could be crying I could be wanting to express something you know to him and like I could be crying and then like I just like start laughing in the middle of crying <laughs> because I can't like I actually can't take myself very seriously like but the crying is really serious like it's not pretend like you know I'd be like upset and then I just somehow like I can notice myself on how strained I must look you know I feel like I'm very expressive in my face like so I, I get like a sense of like of that and I just like laugh at myself and then I go back to crying again like, and then laugh and cry <laughs> you just can't take yourself very seriously <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> but it doesn't mean that life can't still play all its colours, whatever they are. Like you're a beautiful, colourful background there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't remember the SpongeBob song at the bottom of the sea. Expecting you to start singing on it. Wait. <laughs> it's uh, spongier and he's innocent. It's it, There's a beauty about him that I just totally love. <laughs> oh, thank you for playing. This is some. Are you going to say something? One more time? I said thank you for today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I have um, some news. I'm actually going to get a new hip. Oh, yeah? Do you need a new hip? Yeah. yeah. It's been mm -hmm. a long road to get here, but um, my surgery is next Friday. Wow. Was this, I remember like a while ago, good long time ago, now your wife had something. Did she have a new hip? Or what did she get? A few, a few months ago, did she have a hip replacement surgery? Yeah. It's, it's about a year ago. Yeah, a year ago this month. Okay, so now it's your turn. Now it's my turn, yeah. And um, the reason I was willing, um, rather than putting it off a few years, is that um, I can begin to run again. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a, a recreational runner since I was like 12. Okay. And um, not to be able to do it has been sort of sad oh, yeah. so um the surgeon said that you know that it's all about your quality of life so if you want to start to run again once you're recovered that's okay oh, that's so, cool. yeah so it means that i'll have to just um um practice the next few verses or a few chapters um, <laughs> on my own until we can be together again yeah so you can send me a message whenever you feel ready to meet me and next week, I'm actually going on a retreat for myself, self-guided silent retreat for a weekend. So I'm really excited for that. And is it um, out of town or? Yeah, like not too far away. It's about, it's like a kind of a pilgrimage place. It's a really beautiful place called Glendalough. And it's maybe about two hours or so away from here. And you can rent out like a little kind of cottage or some hermitage. They call it a hermitage. Reminds me of a little hermitage in the uh -huh. So I'll be going on Friday though. So I'll be thinking of you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> For sure. Here's to the silence. Can't really hear what you're saying. The computer is kind of breaking up. <laughs> here's here's to uh, a great retreat and i'm sure the the room and the whole place will just be glowing brightly when you mm -hmm. when you leave it so i'm happy for for them and for you and all blessings to your surgery sure Thank you. Thank and enjoy you. your rest you get to have a good long rest you get your wife gets to take care of you for a while. She's taken two weeks off of work. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah we'll I hope you to get that. to just lie down and get all your meals brought to you. Everything. Great. Yeah. Bye. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Till next time. Love you very much. Okay. Love you too. Bye. Bye.